Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to take a step back into Raw Therapy 5.8, one of the development versions, 2776, string of numbers. I won't bore you with that. We did a quick comparison, if you haven't already seen it, between that and the Raw Loader that comes packaged with Photoshop 2021. Go check that out if you haven't had that opportunity. But for today, let's look at the exciting features that are in development in up and coming versions of Raw Therapy and see what they can do for you. So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. Thank you for spending your time with me. If this is your first time viewing this channel, I do a lot of work here to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them. The topic for this video was actually submitted by one of you, by one of the community of learners, and I'm very pleased to bring this up and work on this and, and surface this so we can all share this information and grow stronger together. So digging into raw therapy, if you haven't been exposed to it before, I've done some videos on that in the past, go check them out. It is a raw loader, but it also works as a somewhat full featured raw image editor. There's a lot built into this tool that can help you enhance and refine an image. Now it doesn't get really so much into the photo alteration stage where you would want uh, where you'd be looking to do things like to, to fully remove things or digitally add things in. Uh, it doesn't get quite that deep into the image field, but it does give you m so much control <laughs> over your images, especially if you're bringing them in raw, um, that you can tweak and adjust exposure, balancing of shadows to highlights, overexposure. Uh, there's a lot you can do in this tool. So knowing that, Let's take a look here at the development version here. Now, this is a picture I recently took, and I wanted to show you some of the capabilities that are specific to the development version. I'll first start by pointing out in the upper left-hand corner, there's some other views of the, the color spectrum that haven't been in other versions. You can actually get a vector scope, which is pretty cool. Uh, the reason that that's useful is that you can use that when you're trying to tone them um, specifically like skin tones. It actually does give you a guide. On this particular one, it's over here. Every vector scope I've noticed is a little bit different between tools, but this is kind of the, the benchmark, if you will, kind of the guiding line of what to aim for if you're going to try to achieve a uh, common skin tone. And again, it is a guideline. You may need to, to vary that a little bit depending on the kind of image you're working on, the kind of conditions you shot with, and the kind of mood or, or tone you're looking for in the end. So again, that's just kind of the guideline, but it's helpful to see, and it's helpful to see the spread of color where things fall so you can tune that up. So you could take that and go into uh, the HSV, and you could flip these over to equalizer and you could make your adjustments and this is actually really cool in that as you move the mouse around the image you can see there that it's actually plotting out where in the spectrum that is which is pretty cool that's helpful as a reference point um, as you start to make adjustments over here you can see how the uh, the graph will change if I flipped it on <laughs> how the graph will change based on those adjustments. You can see the image changing as well as the vector scope because it's replotting where I've put the color. And I can work on trying to match that up on tone and positioning within there to try to get it dropped on there. And I could play with the other colors too to try to get this in place. I could also work on the tone of his coat. You could do a lot here with HSV. There's some really interesting things you could do, you know, maintaining certain properties. But there's another way to do it now. You have a new tool in this development version, which is called Local. And the reason this is really innovative is that it's hearkening back to the idea of using layers. I've mentioned this in my other videos. Um, and the closest fit that I'd seen to the layer approach, I'm just going to flip off the camera here for a moment, is this idea of snapshots over here where you could take points in time and you could use that as kind of pseudo layers, or you could enact changes. You could make a few more changes, do a couple more things, add another snapshot, and you could use this tool to roll back and forth between those things. That was kind of the sort of pseudo layer thing that I'd seen to date kind of the best fit I thought we were going to see. <laughs> 
But lo and behold, there is now this local section, local adjustments that you can do even more. Now, to be aware, you do have to flip it on just like any other module. Um, so it, you can use the controls, but they don't actually do anything until you turn it on. <laughs> Makes sense, right? You start by adding in a layer. Oh. They call it kind of a spot. So it's kind of a layer. Um, you can rename it if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. And then you can tack on a certain or a specific kind of control into that layer. This is cool in that you can actually pick a spot. This is almost like a masking approach within individual layers. Uh, you can pick what you want to manipulate. So in this case, I'm gonna try to draw around the face here. And I wanna warm it up a little bit because it's a little pale with the amount of light going on. To do that, I'm gonna try to shape this just a little bit. This part is okay. <laughs> In terms of how you can drag this tool around, it's not a picture of perfection, but it does give you some control and flexibility for, for selecting just certain pieces. So you can do that. You actually can, if you flip on the additional settings, you can actually change the type of shape into a square. If that's easier to work with. Right now I'm going to use ellipse because that's a little bit more appropriate to just trying to grab as much of the face as I can. So now back to the tool. We're going to use this one layer. I am going to add in vibrance and warm. And what that allows me to do is we can actually, to a point uh, within that section that I've, I've selected, adjust the overall vibrance, which is actually a mix of HSV all in one. You could take it that way. You can make the temperature adjustment again within that spread that I am doing. And you can see how it's only being affected within that selected space. This is actually very similar to the idea of uh, brush adjustments uh, from Photoshop, uh, how they do things. So this is not too far off. Again, you don't get the, the kind of the stroke, but you do get to selectively pick where you're going to work on. Just to include this alongside everything else, you can change the spot method. You can flip this into an excluding spot, so it kind of inverts the effect. Or you could meaning that it applies outside of that <laughs> um and you could actually flip this to full image but what that does is that it takes away the image drawing so before you do something like that i would suggest duplicate what you're working on and then from that duplicate from there then change that to a full image to see if you're really going to want that kind of thing because that actually will change uh what you're potentially trying to do as you can see here. Um, so again, just to note the different modes, there are a lot of different extra settings here uh, that I've tried to figure out what they try to do. I don't think everything is fully functional just yet because uh, it's still under development. It's not a full stable release. Um, so feel free to check those out, but I don't quite have a good grasp of what they do just yet. I've noticed that as I change some of them, it doesn't quite clearly show what's going on. And I think it's just because they're not quite ready yet. So know that there's more more in the mix uh just hasn't quite been fully brought to fruition at least as far as i can tell and now i can add in additional layers to work from i can add other pieces and again i do have to to select or what i could do which is possibly more valuable is i could go back to this one and duplicate it so i i can maintain that shape i'm actually going to take that one away and hide Hiding will take away the guide, by the way. That doesn't actually hide the layer. You have to dis you have to uncheck Enable to make it uh, disappear off of the range of layers, and then that takes away the guide. So I'll do that. We're going to move into this new one because I want to maintain that shape and put it in the same space. And we want to work on this. Now, it already has in that previous module that I put on. So I'm gonna flip this to tone mapping so that we can accomplish something else here. So that's really the, the gist of this here is that you can work individually on different layers. You still have the ability to do snapshots along the way as you're doing these things, uh, but you can work as kind of pseudo layers uh, that you can either hide away or take away as you go. 
and and see how it changes the overall image and uh, and, and work non-destructively with those different pieces. So this is a really, really interesting innovation that I look forward to seeing. I actually, I hope they <laughs> put this into production soon. Uh, but if you're curious to try it out and play with it and actually just get access to this functionality now, you can go download the development build. I'll put a link in the description below, understanding that it is not considered stable. So you may run into some oddities along the way. Uh, but again, it's free, it's open source. You can have access to it now and try it out. It will install alongside um, an existing version of raw therapy. Uh, I have a production release and I had this one right now and they can coexist when you work on one. It actually notates the version in its settings file that it generates every time you work on an image. Uh, so you actually can work on the same image independently even between the two versions, which is pretty cool. Just to add a quick clarification, while you can work on the same raw image in both versions of the production and development release, it will actually overwrite the version within the PP3 file. That's the uh, the file that keeps all the settings and things that you're working on and saves them for later use. So just be aware that as you do that, you will possibly contend that. You can still technically work on it, but you may want to take a backup of the PP3 uh, in those cases, uh, just to make sure that if it was important to you, you don't lose it. Uh, one caveat there though is that I've noticed it's a little harder to open up images into coexisting versions like that. You have to purposefully open up the development version and then further open up the image you want, uh, which you can kind of find your way through. It's just not as convenient as opening up if you've associated, say, the raw file type with raw therapy. You have to kind of do a couple extra steps, but it works. So that is really really the the whole spread here that I wanted to cover. I'm, I'm, there may be more pieces. I'm still exploring it. But those two things are really exciting developments with the vector scope and with that level of control on individual layers that we did not have before that now you can control and you can rework selectively on different levels non-destructively. It's a really exciting development. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for watching this kind of quickie demonstration and update of Raw Therapy 5.8. Consider giving me a thumbs up if this was helpful and let me know that this is the kind of content you'd like to see more of. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome projects we're gonna to get to in the future and leave a comment, ask a question, join the community of learners and get involved. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the next video.